So welcome to the advanced portion of the episode on uh, center of gravity and stability in our aerodynamics series. And we're assuming for this video that you've watched the previous video of explaining why center of gravity is important. Now we're going to teach you a little bit about calculating the center of gravity and why the center of gravity needs to be where we say it is. And so 15% is a general rule. Mark's going to talk more about that. But I'll show you a little bit about calculating center of gravity. And so you'll learn pretty early on in engineering career about moments and what they are and how to balance them. And so a moment essentially is just a force at a distance. It, there's also a torque, but torque prefers more to the material and like the stresses within it. You, you create a torque on something, but a torque, give, a torque will cause a moment to happen. The moment is just a rotational force. And so any moment is just F times D. So F meaning the force, D meaning distance away from whatever your axis is. And so whenever we're modeling a, an aircraft, say you have a plane right here, and it has this body. So you know with your wing right here, that you're going to have some lift right here. And so if you calculate where you want your center of gravity to be, say we say, OK, this is the spot, then you'll treat your center of gravity, at your calculated center of gravity, as your axis. And so what you would then do, do then is you want to balance the moments. You, and so we represent that as a summation. And so you say the sum, this means sum of the moments. And your goal is for the sum of the moments to equal 0. And what that means is, say you have an engine here. And so the center of ma mass of the engine is this. And so we'll say this is Me, mass of the engine. And then you have you know, a hydraulic pump here. And you'll say, this is the mass of the hydraulic pump. And so this is Mh. And then also you have this whole empennage right here. And this all has its own weight. So we'll say this is mass of the tail. And so if you're going to sum all these moments in one place, you're going to go ahead and write a formula. The sum of the moments is equal to, well, how far is this from that? Well, it's DE equals MEDE plus, you find out this distance, MN, DN, and then lastly, this distance which is M, T, D, T. And so, if you notice though, this is all plus. So everything in front of our axis is going to be a positive value for the distance. But if you're going back, or actually in front of it meaning this direction. If you're going this direction, you're on the negative axis, you think like a coordinate axis. So you have positive and negative. So this is actually going to be a negative. So your DE, is a negative value. And so what that means is your mass of the engine times that, well, if this is, say, 10 times 2, 10 times whatever 2 units that is, and this is plus 5, if, you, if the mass of your tail is 5 kilograms times 4 meters, and then you're the mass of your engine then, if you wanted to calculate the mass of your engine, or then you can determine how far do we need to move the engine from the center of mass in order to reach a zero moments around the center of mass, then you can say the mass of the engine happens to be 50. And then we have DE. So you set this whole thing equal to zero. These all go over to the other side, and you'll find you have 20 plus 20 plus 50 equals 20 plus 20, or not 20, 20 plus 20 divided by 50 equals 4 fifths. And so then you know, hey, my engine, and this needs to be 4 fifths of a meter away from the center of mass. And then you know you can balance it right on that point. And so anything you do, you can model it that way. Alternatively, also whenever we're building on the scale aircraft, you can assume a uniform mass of the material making up the fuselage and all materials. And so then you can say, hey, here's where the natural center of gravity lies. 
like in before we had that paper airplane that we folded it, it was tail heavy, so it didn't fly. So you can see the natural center of gravity is somewhere back here. You calculate where your center of gravity needs to be for stability. And then you can use that mass times the distance to the natural CG. And then add that into this calculation. And then everything else will balance out, including the frame of the airframe itself. OK, so now we're going to talk about how to calculate exactly where to put the center of gravity. So if you have, a, we're going to look at the side of a wing again. It looks something like this, like we talked about in last week's video. On a wing, you have all kinds of pressures. There's lots of pressure going upwards, and that's, that's what's helping you fly. Uh, more on that in our video on lift. So there's pressures all over it. That are trying to make your air they're trying to make your airplane go up. And just like Adam was talking about, all of these forces on, a, on our airplane are going to cause us to want to turn. They're going to create a moment on our airplane. And you can, you can really choose any point as your reference point. And just imagine sticking a rod through that point. So if we take this point right here, and we stick a rod through the front of our airfoil, all of this pressure is going to make the airfoil flip upwards like this. Now if we stick one, if we stick our rod at the very back of the airfoil, that's going to make it flip as well. And it gets even more complicated because the amount that it wants to flip changes based on the angle of attack. So the angle of attack is how angled your airfoil is. For example, this is at a higher angle of attack than this. And that changes the pressures on the airfoil. So now, if we calculate right here, we're, it's still going to want to twist this way, but it's going to want to twist using a different amount of force, and it just becomes a complicated mess. But there is one point, one point on the airfoil that when we calculate the different moments around it, it does something really great. There's a point somewhere where if we stick a rod in right there, and that's, this isn't necessarily drawn to scale, if we stick a rod in right there, it's going to want to turn either this way or this way. But as we change the angle of attack, that amount that it wants to turn by doesn't change. In other words, the moment stays constant even as the angle of attack changes. And that is still complicated, but it lets us define something really useful. We actually call this point the neutral point. So this point, the neutral point, is the furthest back that we could put our center of gravity and still have our airplane be stable. If you put it in front of, if you put your center of gravity in front of your neutral point, you will have a stable airplane. If you put your center of gravity behind the neutral point, your airplane will be unstable. And that could be desirable for different, um, different applications, but usually we want an airplane to be pretty stable on its own. So the way that you calculate where to put the center of gravity is you take the distance between the center of gravity Let's say you put the center of gravity right here. You put the center of gravity right there, and you calculate the distance between the center of gravity and the neutral point. And then you take that distance and you divide it by the average chord of the wing. And the reason we say the average chord is because wings are usually not perfectly rectangular, and they will look like this a lot of the time. And the chord is this distance from the front of the wing to the back of the wing. And you can see that's different here, and here, and here, and here. But we can find the average. And so 
what we define right here is we say that the distance divided by the mean aerodynamic core and that's just a fancy way of saying the average distance from the front to the back of a wing. We call this the static margin. And we want this static margin to be somewhere between 0.1 to 0 0.15. We usually write it in terms of percentages, so we'd say 10% to 15%. And that's not a hard and fast rule, but it's a good rule of thumb to help us know where about we should put our center of gravity. And Unfortunately, you do need to use a computer generally to calculate the neutral point, but once you have that, and it's, it's very possible to do, once you have that, you can then calculate where your center of gravity should go to help you to have an optimally stable airplane.